Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, we're into a new tutorial and basically uh, I've been working on this random little project just for a bit of fun where you play a werewolf and you go around and you kill stuff a bit similar to um, destroy all humans. Um, and I've been learning a bunch of new kind of fun things from this um, just from making this little game and that's kind of what it's all about is just learning some new stuff. Um, and the one thing I'm going to be showing everyone is if I go up here, you can see your footprints, you get a little splash and you get the sound and it follows the direction. I've seen a lot of tutorials doing this, but none of them ever correct the direction of the actual footprint. They always just um, have it kind of go into um, one direction on the X value. So, so I will show you how to fix that too. Um, and I'll also do the splash and the sound as well, just because just it's all in one neat little package um there's a bunch of other random stuff i've never done in this tutorial uh, in this in unreal before so i might cover those as well um just because i've never done tutorials on those sort of things before uh things like dropping the coins uh the coin spinning and just like breaking boxes and stuff as well or, or any item really for that matter but i can show you how to do all that stuff from, just from this this game i've done alone as well i even covered um climbing mechanics as well um the other thing as well I've done in this is, of course, crouching, but that's something that you can find tutorials on for everywhere. But one thing as well that a lot of people don't cover is swimming. Uh, and I've done that here as well. So I've, I've even done some swimming stuff. So if you want to know any of that stuff, let me know in the comments because I'll be more than happy to cover that. Um, but for the most part, we are just going to be covering the, the running and the footprints just because, again, I never see anyone doing tutorials uh, in the correct way. I say correct way, they are doing it the correct way, but they never get the maths right on the actual foot direction. Um, anyway, I've waffled on for two minutes, so let's uh, let's get down to the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is with any character that you're going to use, um, you're going to need your uh, anim BP for one. Uh, but what you're going to need to do is go into every single animation where you will have some form of a footstep. Uh, and open it up essentially. I'm gonna hope I'm gonna pick one of the right ones because there's a lot of different animations in this, but hopefully I've got the right one. We'll have a look. Um, drag up your your animation bar. Here we go. So um, basically, if I pause this animation and kind of get into a bit of a better position, and we drag along, you can kind of make out just about where the footstep takes place, and it comes down. In all honesty, mine's probably a little bit early, but that's fine. Uh, as long as it's in the sort of right area, it will still look good. Um, and then you want to do the right one as well. Uh, I've set these up to be left foot and right foot. The reason I've done that is because if you have just one footstep, it's going to have to pick a location to put that footprint. So having two separate ones, so like a left foot and a right one, just means that you can split out where that um, position ends up. And it's a lot easier than trying to mess around, trying to work out where which one's going first in the animation. Um, to create a new one, just right click, add notify, and you can just create new notify. Uh, you can see I've got one for like climbing right and left. I've got one for swimming and, and all sorts of stuff. You can literally create as many as you want. And then you can call these to do different things. I'll show you an example at the end of some of the other stuff that I've been doing, but just create a new notify and then you can name it whatever you want. And you can just literally call that notify whenever you want. Uh, wherever you need it and you will need to do this on every single animation individually so if for like myself in this example where i have a multi-direction movement where that means i'll go forward back left right diagonal you'll need uh, to do every single one of those animations you'll also have to do like um any jumping so like pretty much the landing you don't need to do the jumping but you will need to do the landing um and just anything else where you have some form of foot movement that will need to um, leave foot impressions. Um, but yeah, so do that for all of your animations, put your left foot and your right foot, make sure obviously you set them all up correctly. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can come to your animation uh, BP. Right click and you'll just put in anim notify and you can grab basically any one of your animation notifies that you've created and it'll create you just a, fan uh, a fancy little custom notification, uh, custom event, sorry, um, just like this. Once, once you've done that, um, we're going to need to do a few different things. So uh, I've got, um, of course, uh, a um, I have got a boolean on mine which checks for falling. You don't need it for the code, but obviously, if you wanted it to not 
do that anim notify when they land uh, or check for when they are falling because what i found is when mine was um falling next to an item and the foot was kind of clipping it would start leaving footprints and make the sound quite aggressively uh, as it was moving down so um i will add mine back in so we'll take an, uh, a branch uh, and we'll add the is falling in there if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But like I said, I advise you just test it up against random objects and stuff and just make sure that it doesn't overclip or play the animations and the sounds and stuff too many times because that would be a big no-no. Um, we're then going to play sound 2D. Now, this all, this all depends on how you want to set your game up. If it's a very simple... Uh, single player game where sound isn't really a big deal you can get away with using a place sound 2d if you're going to have ai's reacting to sounds for example i have very heavy footprints for a werewolf you might not want to use that you might want to use a play sound in location um if you are using uh but the other side of that coin is if you're using um ai behavior trees sort of uh code you will want to also follow, you could do this the same way, but you might want to follow it with a make noise. I will need to first get player character uh, cast to werewolf. We can make this a pure cast. Obviously cast to whatever your character actually is. Uh, mine's obviously werewolf BP in this example. And then we can make noise like so. There we go. Uh, and that will m make the noise for the AI. So, um, yeah, you can play your 2D sound. I can't remember what mine is called. I think it's Werewolf Footprint. Footprint Q, there you go. And then you have this as well. Loudness will always just be one. And um, we'll plug in the noise location in a moment. And the max range is also going to be one in this example. Uh, you'll notice I'm not doing this with our foot. That's because most of this stuff is copy and pasted along. So, for example, we can just literally do do this and uh, pull off the fall, the false, and plug that in like that. Um, so the next thing we need is we need to get our character reference. Uh, if I scroll down, get character. I've zoomed out. Oh my gosh. Uh, we're gonna get uh, the mesh like so and now this will you need to root through your skeleton to make sure you get the right bone um for uh so we're going to get bone transform um and then we're going to split this because we just need the location for this tutorial i don't think we end up using any of the rotation or the scale <coughs> and we're going to change the uh name to l dash foot now like i said i already know what the name of my bones are because i know it's l dash foot or r dash foot for my werewolf this will not necessarily be the same for yourselves if you're using the skelly mesh you will need to go and look at what the name of the foot bone is uh so it could just be like l foot or it could be uh anything so you just need to go and have a look and find that skeleton your bone your skeleton's bones name if you've created your own custom skeleton it will be whatever you've called it when you are creating that skeleton so just be wary that it will not be the same value in there we will copy and paste this down here and same thing again whatever you've called your right foot bone uh will be what you put into that bone name so just bear that in mind um once you've done that, you should be getting uh, lovely in-world um, noise events while also playing your uh, sound of your footstep. If you want to have, so I, I did a tutorial way, way, way back when. If you want the surface stuff, you will have to put all this stuff later. Um, I just didn't want it for mine. I just wanted the same sound to play for my werewolf. Um, so once we've done that, uh, we're just going to want to do a line trace. Um, line trace by channel and the start will be the location of our left foot and the end uh we want to minus subtract from the vector and the only thing we want to subtract on is that z axis uh thousands probably quite extreme um but you can change yours you can you can adjust if you want to 
but I always found a thousand was pretty good. Uh, if we hit something, we basically so again, this is where that um segment would come in of if you wanted to do the surface type, because you could break from this, uh, and then you could do uh, where would it be? Do, do, do physics material get surface type, and then you could switch on your physical surface type. Obviously, look at my old tutorial if you want to set all this up. But basically, you'd have a list of different surfaces, and then you'd add those physics materials to those uh, materials in the game. And if those materials get hit with that surface type, that physical surface type, uh, it will. You can switch out basically what sound it plays, and then you can have just a default if it hits nothing. Um, but we're not doing that in this tutorial uh, because I haven't set that up for this. All we need is the location. Uh, then, now, if you want the mud splash, you're going to want to spawn uh, system at location. Um, plug that in. And all we need to do is uh, apply that location. So it'll just basically spawn in that location, whatever you want. I can't remember what I called it. I think it's mud. Mud surface. There we go. Uh, and that will basically spawn that Niagara system in that location. Um, you can change your story, obviously, whatever you want. You could, might you might want a dusk particle. You might want, um, if you're, again, using surface types, if you had a rain splash, you might just want the splash of water. Um, you could do a variety of different things. Mine's just a mud splash for now because it was easier to set up uh, with everything else. And the whole point of this tutorial was to spawn uh, a decal at location. Okay, and uh, now this is where things get a little bit more complicated because we need to figure out what the rotation is going to be. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to stick that location in. Um, my decal, the one that I used, uh, was a bit of a finicky one. So uh, I needed to um, change the decal size on mine. Uh, and mine ended up being 535 and 30 to get a right size that I wanted. Um, for the most part, you could leave the decal size as you could probably just leave it as one, one, and one. Uh, if it's a if it's already optimized to be the correct size, uh, or you might need to play around with those values. Uh, it will depend on which decal you want to use. Uh, so we need to figure out what the Z coordinate is, and also for the X, just change that to 90, and your rotation Y fit should automatically be uh, minus 90. So we're going to get our character again, um, and then we're going to get uh, actor rotation. Uh, from there, we're going to get uh, get oh get forward vector, and then we just want to uh, make rot from x, and from that x value, we're going to split this up again. And we're going to grab the Z axis from that X rotation and plug that into our yaw. Uh, and the lifespan of that decal, we're going to change to five. So it only stays there for about five seconds. Now I'm not going to go, uh, oh, there's a compile error, is there? Now, oh, what is this compile? Oh, because uh, it's the, the fuel cast. There we go. So we won't get the correct right rotation so we're just going to be focusing on the left and if everything's correct we should get the correct rotation now out of that value like so uh obviously the right one's not working because we haven't finished plugging everything in um but obviously if you just copy and paste that down from everything else you will get the right one as well uh hopefully you found this tutorial uh useful uh, and hopefully it all made sense. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, I'm, I will be aiming to answer everything uh, that I can going forward because I'm, I'm back fully now. Um, so I do apologize for my absence uh, in the last few months. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them. And if there's anything from what you've seen in this video today, like the box breaking, the, 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 um, the token pickups, um, swimming, the climbing, any of that sort of stuff, let me know. I'll be more than happy to um, try and set up a tutorial uh, for you guys to follow uh, so that you can also get those things in your game as well. But thanks so much, guys, for watching. As always, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you're a member watching this, thank you for being a member. 
and I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.